Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto. If you are new here, I make travel vlogs, how-tos, and general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing. 2020 is coming to a close, so it is that time of year again. We're gonna talk about my favorite pieces of gear that I bought in 2020. As always, uh, shooting in my living room, there may be cats. <laughs> um, I will also apologize in advance for the noise from the fire, the fan, the heater, all of the normal household noises that can't be helped. I'm not going to shoot in the garage right now. It is cold. I don't feel well, but here we are. <laughs> I probably bought a lot more gear in 2020 and received a lot more gear this year purely because I was getting ready for the flight of the Magpie trip. And if you do not know what I'm talking about, I will leave uh, links to the playlist above my head where you can binge 11 beautiful episodes of my loop of the United States that I did in August to September. It's pretty rad. I'm pretty proud of it. So if you haven't watched that already, please do. That being said, narrowing down my favorite pieces for this year was a little harder than usual. So I will have a couple more honorable mentions at the end of my top five. Let's, let's get to it, shall we? First on my list is the Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL2 Bike Packing Tent. The UL stands for ultralight, the HV stands for high volume, and bikepacking means that this edition of the tent has the 13 inch poles, which makes it extremely compact and amazing for motorcycle camping. I did uh, gush a little bit about this tent already this year in the prep videos for Flight of the Magpie. I'm gonna mention those prep videos quite a bit, so if you haven't watched those, also link above my head. But now having gotten to camp in this tent quite a bit this summer, and just appreciate how little space it took up in my gear. Just, I don't know how I existed before. I really don't. <laughs> it is so compact and easy to set up. Um, there's so much headspace. And can we talk about the pockets in this tent? Oh my gosh, the pockets. Like normally there's like a couple corner pockets in the tents that I've had before, but these ones also have like an over the head pocket above your head and also at your feet. I think they call it like a media pocket at your feet so you can like slide a tablet or something into that pocket and like watch it while you're like going to bed. It just, it's so cool. I love it so much. <laughs> I will, I will be probably using this tent for quite a long time to come. This meets like everything I could have dreamed of. It has been thoroughly tested in the rain. I like got that downpour in West Virginia. All of my stuff inside the tent was perfectly dry. It is a significant purchase. It is not a cheap tent, but it was so worth it. Uh, this is definitely not a tent that I would recommend to somebody who only goes camping like once a year. <laughs> this is definitely, I go camping at least once a month, if not more kind of tent. Or if you do big multi-day trips or like one big multi-day trip every summer where you're going to be sleeping in it for like six nights in a row. Or if you do big trips on a very small bike where space is a premium, highly, highly recommend. It was worth every penny, 100%, zero, zero regrets. Cody from Two Wheels in a Tent also did a review of this tent that I will link above and down in the description if you want somebody else's like more in-depth review of all the wonderful features of this tent. If there are enough people who want it, I will do like a big breakdown of the tent and all of its features. If you want that, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, just this was awesome. <laughs> Next on my list is the Revit Women's Neptune Jacket and Pants. I have had the Scorpion suit for two years now. And well, if you watch The Fly the Magpie, you know that I had a little bit of a gear failure, which it's probably half my fault and half the Scorpion suit's fault. So when I got back, I decided to invest in Gore-Tex. Now this is not the first time that I've come back from a trip after being wet and decided to spend a lot of money on Gore-Tex. And I have said it before and I will say it again, if it's not Gore-Tex, it's not waterproof. The five things I learned from the pilgrimage video, I talked about that when I got the gear and all-terrain boots, um, which I still have by the way, and are still doing amazing. My feet have still been dry. Even when I went through that downpour, my feet were probably the only part of me that was dry. <laughs> I have gotten to ride in this three or four times since buying it after getting back. You probably would have seen this uh, in my video last week with Dork of the Road and For the Love of Knobs links. You know the drill. But i am been super stoked about the performance. There are a couple of things that I'm still getting used to transitioning from the Scorpion suit to the Revit gear. 
things like the European cuts. There isn't a whole lot of movement in the shoulders. It's a lot tighter fit, also because it's women's gear instead of me trying to fit into men's gear. So that's something that I'm still trying to get used to. <laughs> but I'm stoked to test its capabilities in the coming months, especially my uh, annual trip to Montana in April when the weather is still pretty iffy and very cold. Just doing that trip down to Eugene and, hit, and hitting the snow in last week's video back in November, I was still pretty darn warm. I have no complaints about that whatsoever. But it also has a lot less vents than the Scorpion suit does, so I probably will be keeping the Scorpion suit for those days in the middle of the summer where it is properly hot and I need all the vents I can get. <laughs> I'm also a little sad that there wasn't more color options and that I had at the black and there was no lighter color option. The tan color of the Scorpion suit has grown on me quite a bit and I will miss that especially in editing because it's so much easier to expose for a lighter color suit than it is for black. But that's besides the point. That's not a problem that most people have. <laughs> so I'm sure you'll be hearing more about my thoughts on the Neptune suit in the coming months, especially once we get through this next season. Next we have the Wolfman Luggage 2020 all new waterproof lineup, specifically the Black Hawk tank bag and the new Rocky Mountain expedition and dry saddle bags. I will include here for transparency sake that I am an ambassador for Wolfman Luggage. They sent me all the new bags from their lineup to get me ready for the trip this year. So I did not buy these bags with my money. They were sent to me. However, Wolfman Luggage does not pay me. They don't pay me to talk about their gear. They did not ask me to talk about their gear. All of these opinions are my own. They don't know that I'm making this video. With that out of the way, can we talk about how big of an upgrade it is to have a waterproof tank bag? Cause whoa. Having a waterproof tank bag and also that the Black Hawk tank bag is like a full 10 liters. I didn't realize how much of a game changer this was going to be until I had it and it was here and up just in my old tank bags, I would have to like wrap all of my camera gear in like dry bags to make sure that, you know, if it sprinkled or if it did rain, none of my camera equipment was going to get wet or damaged. Um, I didn't have to worry about that this whole trip and it was incredible. It made my camera equipment so much easier to just like open the tank bag, grab it out. The foam solution was great for the trip, but it was definitely deteriorating by the end of it. Um, the Black Hawk tank bag also comes with a map pocket um, that comes stock with the, the thing. I took that off just to have the elastics so that when I came to a gas station or something, I could just like slip my gloves into the elastic. You know, when you get to the gas station and you don't know what to do with your gloves, so you put it on the tank or you put them, shove them into the handlebars or something, and then the wind picks up and grabs them and you have to go and chase your gloves. Is that just me? I don't know. Also, Let's talk about the incredible upgrade from the regular expedition saddlebags that I had before to the Rocky Mountain um, expedition saddlebags. 30 liters per bag, you guys. Oh, I know that I talked about this in one of the prep videos, so I'll link that above my head too. And I also talked pretty more in depth about the upgrades for the Rocky Mountain saddlebags versus the expedition saddlebags in that prep video. So definitely go watch that if you want a, a like fuller breakdown of the Rocky Mountain saddlebags. It's definitely true. The more space you have, doesn't matter. You will fill it up. Just <laughs> next on my list is all of my SW Motec parts that I got this year for the trip. Since I technically bought the saddlebag racks in 2019, I'm not going to talk about those a lot today, but a lot of people ask me what they are. So just here for everybody, those are the SW Motec quick lock Evo side case racks. They're technically for the hard luggage that SW Motec sells, but they are perfect and sturdy and wonderful mounting points for soft luggage like the Wolfman Luggage Rocky Mountain saddlebags and also their expedition bags. I have those mounted to those racks as well. But I did buy the SW Motec skid plate this year and the SW Motec street rack, like luggage rack, for my Honda CB500X. Let me tell you how awesome it is to not have to mount my duffel bag on my passenger seat. It made it so much easier to access my saddlebags. That was just super nice. Next up in the honorable mentions is actually what I'm reading my notes off of right now. It is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. 
this is also what I used to edit all of the videos while I was on the road. So like the, the three like kind of informal updates from the road were all edited on this tablet. I have tried carrying a laptop with me before. It's just too much extra bulk. My next honorable mention are my Sony WF-1000 noise canceling earbuds that I got this year. Um, I got the Sony noise canceling like over the earbuds um, at uh, Sony Camera Camp. I think that was last year. Wow, time is weird. Anyway, those are super awesome headphones. However, since they're big and over the ear, they're kind of bulky, not super awesome to bring on the road because they take up so much space. These are nice and compact, um, super easy to take with me. Uh, so that it was good to like have these at camp. Um, Non-wired earbuds are really awesome when you're setting up camp because you don't have to worry about the wire getting caught on stuff while you're setting up your tent. Of course, there was like a ton of stuff that I got this year and a ton of gifts from you guys, which was amazing and definitely upgraded my trip. Thank you to everybody who bought stuff off my Amazon wish list, like the SD card holder that I took, my little electronic organizer thing. This was freaking awesome. Um, made organizing all of my wires and stuff super easy. Just thank you. You know who you are. You are awesome. Thank you. I think that's everything that I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button. If you would like to get early access to videos like these and support the channel for as little as $1 a month, you can get these videos before everybody else ad free over on my Patreon. Links to that are down in the description. If you cannot do that right now, or if that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I also have t-shirts, stickers, prints, all the good things with my motorcycle art on them in my Revelable shop. If you would like to get something personally from me, hand packaged and sent to you, um, that is what my Etsy shop is for. Links to that is also down in the description. If you cannot support me monetarily right now, that is absolutely okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here and watching these videos every single week. Question for my answering crew. Please tell me what was the favorite thing that you bought this year? Upgrade to your bike, favorite piece of tech gear that you got that upgraded your travel experience, maybe some luggage. Let me know down in the comments. Okay, guys, <laughs> I'll see you later. I was watching the favorite gear video from 2019 and I was also sick during that time and my hair was also greasy and I was in the living room because I am not feeling well again. Maybe December is just like not my jam. I will say it's a different kind of sick so I've got that going for myself I guess. Also I hope somebody noticed that I lit a fire for you guys this year. Somebody commented on the 2019 gear video that if I was gonna film in my uh, living room I should at least light a fire. Well I did. See? Ta-da! Oh, it's burnt down a little bit. <laughs> Been going at this for a little while. <laughs>